My name is Harish Vasudevan, and my, my background is that I hold a PhD in pharmaceutical sciences from UBC. Presently, I work with Tate Laboratories, which is a two-person startup company that is focused on developing nutraceutical products reinterpreted in modern science. So that's what I do on the side. I actively try to work with as many trainees or, or seekers of knowledge that I can, and I will be starting out as a career consultant for UBC Career Services. My interactions with the graduate student community are really diverse. Like for example, at my workplace, I don't have any interactions as such because we are a startup firm. But having said that, I'm actively involved in most of the networking events as a mentor at the Student Biotech Network, which is one of the single largest student-run, say, networking societies in Vancouver. And also, I work actively with UBC Career Services and attend several of their workshops as a panel member and interact with grad students, postdocs, and so on. So yes, on a community level, lots. But then on a more professional work-related re level, very little. My academic background is very diverse. And that is something I've really struggled to position myself as in a particular box, if you like. So my, I have a bachelor's in pharmaceutical sciences from Bombay, India. Now, it's not the kind of pharmacy that puts you, lets you practice as a pharmacist, but it's most, more industry oriented. I followed that up with a master's in natural health products, also known as pharmacognosy, from uh, another research institute in India, uh, following which I worked in the Indian pharma industry for a year in research and regulatory capacities. I realized that uh, this was pre-India, pre-boom India, I'm sorry, and uh, I realized that my opportunities were very limited with what I had at that point, and I decided to get a PhD. And I came over to UBC, the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, where I did my PhD in pharmacology, specializing in the cardiovascular complications of uh, diabetes and insulin resistance and how gender contributes to it. That took me a good seven years, during which I also got a master's. Follow and following that, I went over to do a postdoc on the other side of campus at the Center for Drug Research and Development, which many of you might be aware that it, is, it works at the interface of academia and industry and is potentially an excellent bridge for anyone looking to cross over from academia to industry. Wherein you need to ask yourself, what floats your boat? Just because of the fact that we should never forget that in, in graduate school, we are in training. We are in training to learn a set of skills, as many skills as possible, that can be applied to solving problems and people's pains in different fields. So ask yourself what you want to do. It's good to talk to people, get to know the information. But if you ask me, for example, how did I choose it? I knew for a fact that academics was not my cup of tea, particularly with the publisher Parish Paradigm, public, particularly with me working on the bench for 14 hours, which most postdocs do with a smile on their face. I don't necessarily support that. So I realized that was not my thing. I was a guy who was more interested in the industry side of things, particularly sectors that required high intellectual capital and was into more problem solving and say interacting with people. I think that I knew was my forte. So for people, I think you need to ask what works for you. And I'm sure people easily understand that one of, there is no one way of doing it. One of the easiest ways to do this is elimination by elimination, essentially, where you decide what doesn't work for you. And I'm sure you'll narrow it down to a set of things that you think works for you. Your graduate training can be translated into either of the sectors, be it academia, be it industry. The million dollar question is, how can you use your knowledge to solve 
or to cure someone else's pain. And this is not necessarily a physical one, but it could simply be the need for someone to come up with an excellent model, or it could be to come up with an, an, an antivirus, so to speak. So any of these things. And what I realize is in graduate school, we are exposed, and I'm sure people are exposed even more now, to a whole slew of technical and, tra and translatable skills. Okay? So when, in, in terms of the technical skills, yes, it is a given that as part of the program, you will learn technical skills. But the whole idea of a graduate program is to make people appreciate the bigger picture wherein they know why those technical skills were intended to be used and when you use them, what is the outcome? So look at the bigger picture, come down to the microscopic level and then go back to the macroscopic level wherein you can tie the pieces and complete the jigsaw. So essentially that's what the graduate school teaches you. So do not be afraid to ask yourself what are those skills? Even if it means that those might be problem solving skills, those might be grant writing skills, those might be communication skills, or those might be just the ability to put your arm around a, col uh, or a colleague's shoulder and make them feel better. There is no written rule that just because you did a set of experiments in grad school means that you have to do that for the rest of your life. So be brave to ask questions and find that out in, ter in, in terms of what works for you. Every person that you meet, every event that you go to, and every moment you, you don't know who would be that person who opens doors for you. For example, a classic starting point, go to the career services at UBC. That's where I started my career search and I had people helping me out craft my resume and or, or my little summary of who I am, it does take an interesting journey of rediscovery because we, we know ourselves, but to articulate what we know of ourselves is a certain kind of challenge. I, I check the biotech section and I know they do update all the time. And the other option is put yourself out there, go to events like the one the SBN holds, the Life Sciences BC does the events that UBC Career Services puts together or some of the my tax related events, I am sure that there is always someone who is starting something or who is in the process of hiring whom you will hear of. The, the whole word organic takes on a totally different meaning the moment you talk to that, the, the moment you start putting yourself out there and actually investing in yourself. So I think there are not a lot of sources per se, but I guess there are a lot of sources in the sense that every person is a potential source. Doesn't mean that you have to hound them by the scruff of their neck until they cough up the answers, but if not today, as long as they remember you in a positive way, they will come and tell you tomorrow. I've done it to a few people, lots of people have done it to me, so I think the, the paying it forward concept is still there and it is a good resource. I think it's not a UBC graduate degree per se, but a graduate degree is just not enough. And I'm sure if anyone looks at, looks at the data, reads the newspapers, you easily find out one thing is that there's, there is this perceived, and up to a certain extent it's true, there is this perceived disconnect between academia and industry. The, the, the reason being that the needs of the industry change in minutes of a particular company and so on, because hours later, if they don't have money, they cease to exist. With academia, it's more of a quest for knowledge where you're exploring fundamentals. So I think in, in terms of a graduate degree per se, it's not necessarily enough. Now, fortunately, in, in UBC as a specific institution and across Vancouver, there is enough resources to be tapped to get those skills. A lot of times, yes, you will have to volunteer, but think of it as an investment in yourself when you're trying to test a place to, to, to evaluate whether that's the place, that's the way you want to be working, okay? 
Having said that, I should also say that there are a lot of soft skills. I know people don't like using that term, but people like to work with people whom they like, whom they are comfortable with. And a graduate degree per se doesn't give you that. What it gives you is a certain credibility of successfully being through a process wherein you can look at a problem, break it down, analyze it, and put back the solutions and Im potentially implement it. Now, in today's times, where you have a huge discrepancy in the supply and demand, particularly on high tech and high intellectual capital sectors, there is no one recipe really to do this. But I guess, along with graduate skills, the skills that you will require, and I know for a fact that UBC helps you prepare for it, is presentation skills, packaging it. Because no matter how good the, the core product is, you need to package it and realize who your audience is, package it to their needs, and tell them a story. I think that's essentially the, the, the whole marketing component, the presentation component, how do you talk, how do you present, those kind of skills really go well with your grad school. The other thing is also perception. You know, I think it's just not possible wherein you stay in grad school, look at academic publications, and then say that the industry is not research focused enough. With, with the industry, the idea is they want you to hit the ground running. And they want you to be perceptive wherein you realize that it may not necessarily be rocket science, but it is at a level that works and is actually capable of creating a product and or a solution that is going to affect someone's life in some way. So a lot of it is, it comes out of empathy. Now a graduate study, the graduate degree does not necessarily teach you this. I think in, in terms of tips, I'd say, student, I'd say to any trainee that they should learn to appreciate the concept of risk from very early on. The risk is a, is a word that can be applied to anything. So for example, that they are in a graduate program has a certain opportunity cost at the end of which they will be ready or not ready. Essentially, they, when they graduate, they'll have to go find a job. So the odds are that you, you better hedge your bets before getting there, which essentially means implementing, thinking and implementing a bunch of strategies as to who you want, where you want to work with, work, who you want to work with, how you want to work, and so on. Now, this doesn't have to yield a solution today. It is always a work in progress, particularly simple things like constructing your resume. Have it in hand. Have a business card in hand. I don't think of any better investment. It's, it probably costs you around 30 to 40 bucks at Staples for a stack of 500 or something, but it's, it's probably one of the best investments you could have made. So have that in handy. In terms of looking for careers beyond your grad school, beyond your brief, do that right away. As I said, the grad school only trains you to, and puts you through a certain process, the grad degree itself. But the grad school, remember, is about people. And I think, be it when you're looking for work, be it you're working for someone, be it you're, you're doing a degree with someone, or at any stage, you just cannot rule out the importance of the people you interact with. So never underestimate them, never take them for granted. Everyone has something to teach us. It might be something to how to do it. It might be sometimes how not to do it. Vancouver may not necessarily be the best place to start a career given how we are as a lifestyle city and so on. But I would say seriously, get out of Vancouver if you can. Go explore the world, go to Toronto, go to the US, go anywhere. As somebody said, you need to do it, pay your dues and work the trenches for lack of a better word. But once you do that, you've earned your stripes. There is no way people are gonna ignore you. And I think in a lot of cases, people in Vancouver want that. Because you have people who have, 
who are, I think, reluctant to leave this city, particularly for family and other personal reasons. But for if you can leave it, please leave, do two to three years and come back. That sort of a training really gives you a better perspective. And I mean, in as senior a position as possible, just go and explore. I'm sure your, your way of looking at how things work completely changes. Try keeping a blog. Try writing a blog. A lot of times, I think with, as you go towards a PhD, you do find that you get technically very strong, but articulating it in a lay language, that I think is an individual challenge that I would really appreciate grad students to take up. Where if they can articulate their work, their mission in a simpler language and actually convince the average person reading it, they would have done themselves a huge service because that automatically means that you are not only convincing someone about your work, you're contributing to demolish some of the age old stereotypes about grad students and PhDs that they live in ivory towers and throw jargon at you to confuse you. That is not what it is. So we also need to humanize ourselves, which is so easy to not do, but it is something that is a subtle value add and it'll automatically attract people because right now that number is really small and for anyone who does it, they could automatically get an interview call. You have to seize the moment and, and do it. And I guess there are enough resources, enough people around to hold your hand, offer you a glass of water and comfort you while you're down. But unless you earn that, you just can't taste the sweetness of it. Feel free to volunteer and ask. It's a probable cliche by now, but you might want to definitely ask, how can I help? And I'm sure people will come to you with problems. And the moment you solve one, I, I realize that through personal experience, it all takes, all it takes to solve is do is check off number one, and then everything else follows. So don't give up, hang in there, and use all your resources. They are, they are in pockets, they are in corners, but don't be afraid to explore. My supervisor used to say that you try, you have a one in a million chance. You don't try, you have no chance. So keep trying, and then keep it going.